When I was first getting into jazz, the first three tunes that I learned to play were Autumn Leaves, Take the A Train, and the tune that we're going to learn today, which is Blue Monk. I think all of these tunes are great, and I think they're all great to learn if you are totally new to jazz music, because they're fairly easy to play. Part particularly Blue Monk, it's just a blues in B-flat, and there's not too many weird and wonderful chords in there. There is one, which is kind of crazy, but it's a nice chord. It's what makes this song what it is. Blue Monk was composed by the weird and wonderful Thelonious Monk in 1954. Monk was, let's just say, a bit of a weird character. You take one look at the guy and you think, uh, this guy's from a different planet. Now keep in mind we're talking about the 1950s and 60s here. Jazz musicians were expected to play in a very certain way. Bebop jazz was fast becoming the new norm of jazz. It's like what everyone was supposed to play. It's what we were all meant to play. And then Monk came along and did this. man was just so unusual, so weird and different. Even the way that he played the piano, his technique, if you ask any teacher who teaches the piano, they would say that his hand technique is just totally wrong, just 
you're meant to have curved fingers, right? And his fingers were out like this, and he's just sort of whacking the keys. But despite all of these things, I just can't listen to Monk and not smile from ear to ear while I listen to him play. There's just something about the way that this man plays piano, the way that he plays jazz, that does things to you. You just, you know, all the notes that he plays, well not all, many of the notes that he plays, you would say that's, that's wrong, that, that shouldn't work, that's not the way it should be. But why do I like it so much? It just sounds so good. I don't know. I guess the man's just a genius. I don't know how else to put it. He's just an, he was just an amazing player. And we're going to learn to play one of his most popular tunes today. I would actually probably say this tune, Blue Monk, is one of his less weird tunes. And by the way, Monk was sort of known for putting different variations of his name into the titles of his tunes. There's Monk's Dream and Monk's Mood. Monk's point, Thelonious. Yes, he even used his first name as a title. And of course, there's Blue Monk. Okay, so Blue Monk is of course a blues in B flat. The progression is pretty much just a three chord blues. The only real difference is this funky E diminished chord in measure six. So we've got the one chord in measure one. A quick four chord in measure two, then back to the one chord again for two bars to round off the first line. Now we come to the four chord again for one bar, and then this weird sounding sort of oddball chord, this E diminished seven. In the key of B flat, this is the sharp four diminished chord. Without this chord, it just sounds like a regular blues. So we, we really need to put this chord in there to get that weirdness factor that Monk is sort of going for here. Back to the one chord again for two measures, B flat seven, and the five chord, which is F seven for two measures. And wrapping up the form with the one chord again, last two bars. And then just lather, rinse, repeat. You guys know the deal by now. The first exercise is just roots played as half notes. This will give us our classic two feel bass line that we can play during the opening melody of the tune and once all of the solos and those types of things are finished, we can play it again at the end. So just going through the chords here, the first chord of course is B flat seven. So we'll play two B flats and then E flat seven, two E flats, back to B flat and I'll change octave as well because why not E flat 7 E diminished B flat and F7 make sure to get that low F as well and that's all exercise 1A is one Two, one, two, three, four. Moving on to exercise 1B, we're going to now add in what's called leading notes into our two feel bass line. Now a leading note is where you lead into a note, such as a root note, from a half step below that note. For the note B flat, the leading note of that would be A, so we can play A before we get to B flat. Uh, for E flat, 
that would be D. Right? For F, that would be an E. And I guess we can look at E natural as well. That would be an E flat, right? So you can play an E flat before you get to that E diminished seven chord in measure six. So exercise one B will sound a little something like this. What's nice about using leading notes is most of them actually are still inside the key of B flat major. But you may have noticed for that F chord, the F7 chord, the 5 chord, we use the note E natural, which is not in the key of B flat. In the key of B flat, we have an E flat note, not E natural. But this is a cool sounding note, and you should definitely use it. Also, helps to add to the quirkiness of Blue Monk, right? Moving on to exercise 2A, we're now going to look at the double chromatic approach, which is essentially where we're playing not just one leading note, but we're playing two of them in a row to bring us to the root note of the next chord we're going to. And we can play these either ascending into each root note, for example, B flat, we can go A flat, A, B flat, going up into the note, or we can go from the other direction, descending, C, B, B flat, down into the note that we want to go to. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> move on to actually playing our first full walking bass line now and we'll be using the triads to each of the chords in this chord progression. Now the good thing about using the triads here is three out of the four of them have the exact same left hand shape which is quite nice of course. We only need to learn one pattern and we've learned almost all of them. So for B flat 7 
we're not going to worry about the seven, right? Because we're just going to play the triad. We'll play B flat, first fret of the A string, open D string, and then F on the third fret of the D string. That's the shape we'll be using for these triads. That's for the one chord, for the four chord, same shape. Find your root note, E flat, first fret of the D string, open G string, third fret of the G string for B flat. And now we'll go down for F7, F, first fret of the E string, open A string for the third, and C, fifth, third fret of the A string. Okay, the only one that's different, of course, is the E diminished chord. But if we go back to the E flat chord, it's almost exactly the same thing. So here's E flat, major triad. We're just going to change the E flat to an E. And there we go. That is the shape. Okay, so that's almost the same. Just move that root note up one fret. And there you go. So for the first triad line, we're going to be playing these triads ascending. And that'll sound a little something like this. One, two, three, four. Next exercise, we'll play the same triads, but we'll be playing them descending. So this is the this, this was the triad we used for all of the chords in the last exercise. We're actually going to take that root note for B flat, put it up the octave, and we're going to descend. We're going to play root or octave, fifth, and third. So now we've got B flat on the third fret of the G string. F, the fifth on the third fret of the D string, and the open D string. Now this shape will work for the one chord, and it'll work for the five chord F7. Third fret D string, third fret A string, open A string. For the E flat seven chord, the shape's a bit different. We're gonna play E flat in the same place, and then down to the fifth on the first fret A string, and then down to the third on the third fret E string. And we can use the same trick as we did before for the E diminished chord, just sharpen, or sorry, take off the flat from the E flat chord and keep the other two notes the same. And that's the shape for that chord. If you want it, you could also put the open E string on the bottom but I think I'm starting to get a bit ahead of myself there. So for now, just play the chord like that. All right, this example, this exercise sounds a bit like this. A one, two, three, four. Thank you. 
To finish off today, this last couple of exercises, exercise 4A and 4B, will be combining all of the previous ideas we've looked at. So the major triads, ascending and descending, along with doing half step approaches, so, so the leading note approaches, and the double chromatics that we looked at in the previous examples. And you'll be surprised at how much mileage you can get out of just those two simple approaches. So exercise 4A sounds a little something like this. One, two, three, four. Exercise 4B sounds like this. One, two, three, four. That'll do it for the lesson today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to download all of the exercises from this lesson, you can head over to my Patreon page linked below. I've now got around 80 legends who have signed up to my Patreon page, which is far more than I ever thought that I'd get. So I am eternally grateful for your ongoing support. And it really makes making these videos much, much easier. I have more time that I can free up to film videos. So thank you so much. Thank you again for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. And he's just sort of whacking the keys, sort of like a, I don't know, like a whack-a-mole or something. I don't know. That's an awful analogy. And, and I'm not bumping that mic, am I? I guess I probably am. And, and by the way, and by the way, Thelonious, Thelonious, Thelon, Thelon, Thelon,
that's hard to say, Thel Thelonious. And his playing is a bit like that too. Now, you have to keep in mind that we're talking about the 1950s and... What the hell am I doing with my hands? 